All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look here at this next EKG. Again, we're going to try to determine the rate, the rhythm, try to find out what type of rhythm this is, and then again, what should we do? Because this is a dangerous rhythm. You don't really want to ever see this, but if you ever do, it's pretty darn cool because it's an interesting one. Pretty rare. All right, so first thing we do, rate. How do we determine the rate? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our rhythm strip here in lead two. Here's what's really interesting. You're going pretty, you know, decent, like one, two, three. So 300, 150, 100, going a little bit, um, you know, a little bit under 100. So, but look what happens. You start going, you know, maybe slightly tachycardic and then boom, you start moving super fast where you're going about 300 beats per minute, right? Again, go between each of these R waves. You're going about 300 beats per minute. So let's go ahead and determine the rate for this arrhythmia right here. This is the one that I want us to be able to take a look at here. So how fast is this going? If you look, it's about a box each. All right, so a box is what? So 300 divided by one, we don't even have to do that. That's 300 beats per minute. So this son of a gun is going super fast. So we're tacking away here at 300 beats per minute. All right, that's the first thing. Second thing, R to R interval. Is it the same? All right, well, let's go ahead and start from this point here. We're gonna go again, one box, one box, one box, one box, still one box, again a box, still a box. Yeah, this is definitely going about a box, 300 beats per minute consistently, all right? The amplitude might be a little bit different because it's kind of twisting around, along the base, which is a key word for this one called torsades, whenever it twists around the points. But yeah, the R to R interval is definitely the same throughout this thing. So we have a regular rhythm here. What about the P wave? We had the P wave originally in this kind of like what seems to be kind of a normal sinus rhythm, but eventually it kind of like, boom, we go into this really fast rhythm. In this, again, I just want us to focus on this right here. Do we see any P waves? Not a freaking chance. There's no P wave in sight. So we're gonna say no P waves in this abnormal arrhythmia, okay? Next thing, does a P wave lead to a QRS complex? Well, there's no P wave. If there's no P wave, then a P wave can't lead to a QRS complex. So therefore there's AV dissociation, right? Obviously beforehand, this right here was normal. You were having what looked to be a P wave, a QRS complex, and you were getting your T wave. And again, you get your P wave QRS complex. Yeah, that was normal beforehand. But again, we're only focusing on this rhythm right here. All right, well, let's go ahead and go from this guy here right to this guy here that's almost one whole box one whole box is more than uh, that's about five little boxes right so that's more than three little boxes which is 0 0.12 seconds this is wide complex okay so this is going to be wide complex tachycardia now remember what did i tell you whenever you have a high heart rate you also have a regular rhythm and you have a wide QRS complex, what do we say you want to think about? VTAC, right? Now remember the last EKG we said was monomorphic. They all look the same. Well, this is actually a little bit different. They all don't look the same, okay? So for example, if I'm kind of looking here, some of these are a little bit shorter than the other ones, right? And again, if I look at another part here, if I come over to, let's say, V2 or V5 here, again, some of these are a little bit peaked, and then some of them, they kind of dip down, and then they come back up. Well, that's interesting. And again, if I were to kind of keep over here, some of them are going to be going about the same, and then they dip. If I go over here, right, this is kind of going up, kind of going up, up, and then it kind of dips down here. So we notice that these are not all exactly the same. All of these QRS complexes are not the same. So they're polymorphic. So this is a type of polymorphic VTAC. And when it kind of looks like this, when it twists at the points, it's a specific type of polymorphic VTAC that we call torsades de points. Okay, now torsades the points, the really the, what differentiates this polymorphic VTAC is it has what's called a prolonged QT interval. We're gonna have a very brief discussion on this right now, okay? Here's what I want you to look at. QT intervals. The QT interval is an average interval, okay? So at a heart rate of 60 beats per minute, okay? 
the QT interval for a male should be approximately, okay, 440 milliseconds. For the QT interval for a female, it should be approximately 460 milliseconds. Now that is at exactly 60 beats per minute, all right? When the heart rate starts increasing, it creates a different type of QT interval. So you have to use a certain type of formula. And again, we'll talk about this more specifically in another uh, lecture, but usually you can use what's called Bazet's formula. And Bazet's formula, what it does is, is it uses this specific way of calculating for what's called the QTC, the corrected, corrected QT interval which is equal to the QT interval that we see on the EKG divided by the square root of the R to R interval in seconds divided by one second. So if we were to go ahead and try to calculate the QT interval in this one, utilizing this example. All right, so what we're gonna do is really quickly, we're gonna go ahead and try to calculate this. We're gonna kind of, again, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to get it exactly to the T, but we're gonna try to get as close as we can. So remember, torsades to points is related to a long QT interval. So in other words, somewhere in this, what looks, appears to be somewhat normal, the QT interval is prolonged. Let's go ahead and go into this right here, all right? So if I go from about this start of the Q wave until about the end of my T wave right there, I'm going to kind of measure this distance as my QT interval. All right. So one box is going to be 0 0.2 seconds. So two boxes is going to be about 0 0.4 seconds, right? So that's, we're going to just kind of keep the numbers kind of easy right now. So we're going to say this is about 400 milliseconds. Let's just go ahead and say that. So if that's the case, then we're going to take QTC, the corrected QT interval is equal to 400 milliseconds. And now we got to divide this. So we got to put the square root of the R to R interval, but this has to be in seconds. All right, well, what do we have here is our rate. So we got one, two, three. That's about 100, but again, look, you got a little bit less than that because it's gonna be maybe three and a quarter boxes. Let's just say 90. So let's say 90 beats per minute, okay? So if that's the case, in order for me to get from beats per minute, so let's actually write this out kind of in a conversion sense, 90 beats per minute. So for every one minute, it's 60 seconds. So 90 divided by 60 is equal to 1.5 beats per second. Now I gotta get this where seconds is on top, right? So again, if you wanna think about it like this, it's actually 1.5 beats over one second. We gotta flip it. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this bad boy and we're gonna do one divided by 1.5, okay? So now I have my seconds on top that equals 0 0.66 repeated, okay? And again, that's gonna be seconds, so seconds per beat. So now we got this divided by 0 0.66 seconds divided by one second, okay? Now, when I do this, this gives me 400 divided by 0 0.812. Now, if I go ahead and do this, what's the end answer? it's 492 milliseconds, right? Because this right here, seconds, seconds cancel out. So this is no unit, this is still milliseconds. So I'm left with 492 milliseconds as my corrected QT interval at this new rate of 90 beats per minute. So let's compare. The QTC is equal to 492 milliseconds. And let's just say that this dude is a male. Let's say it's a male. So we have to say, oh man, look at that. It's greater than 440 milliseconds. So right there, I can already tell that my QT interval is too long. When the QT interval starts increasing, as it approaches 500, what happens is it causes this kind of irregular ventricular rhythm that we see as torsades to points, which is a type of polymorphic VTAC related to a prolonged QT interval. So what the heck do we have here? We have torsades to points. What the heck is torsades to points due to? It's usually due to, it could be due to a lot of different things to be honest with you. It could be due to low potassium. It could be due to low magnesium. 
It could be due to multiple different drugs, amiodarone. It could be due to a lot of your antipsychotics like ziprazidone, quetiapine, risperidone, all of those different types of things. It could be due to amiodarone, right? So there's so many different things. It even could be due to genetic things like what we call long QT um, channelopathies. So LQT1 and 2 and 3, so on and so forth. So these are actually genetic conditions that has alterations in your uh, channels, particularly the L-type calcium channels. And again, we'll get into more detail on this when we get into this topic of torsades and go in the pathophysiology and the treatment and all that stuff. But here's what I want you to know. You see torsades to points. Basically what's going to happen is on the EKG, it's going to give you a QTC. You look at the QTC. We kind of just approximated it here. We get 492. That's a long QT interval. You see that then progress into this type of arrhythmia, which is a type of polymorphic VTAC, where it looks like it's kind of twisting along this isoelectric line. That's torsades. The first thing that you want to go ahead and do for this patient is you're going to treat them with IV magnesium sulfate. Okay, so IV magnesium sulfate is going to be the one big thing that you really need to get into these patients who are showing signs of torsades. Okay, that's going to be the big thing to realize. All right, so that is going to be torsades to points. And again, if you look down here in this other EKG, you can kind of see this nice little kind of what we call this twisting. Look at this. So they kind of say it looks supposed to look like a ribbon. So you can kind of see how it's kind of twisting or you have points of where it's high QRS complex kind of thing. And over here you have these like little QRS complexes back to the high QRS and then again back to the low QRS. So this is torsades to points. Let's go ahead and move on to the next EKG and this is going to be VFIP.